Hello, Stitchy friends. Welcome back to my channel. My name is Shanda. I live along the Continental Divide in Idaho, and this is a channel primarily for my cross stitch and my quilting adventures. Uh, what do you do with all these two and a half inch mini charm packs that you've been collecting? Welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to talk about what to do with these little mini charm packs that you collect of your favorite lines of fabric. I have one FFO, which is a fully finished object. I have several FOs. I have three new starts, even though I am the start less stitch more girl. Um, it's my birthday month, so I have a Valentine start, a birthday start, and then one just because. Um, it's really, really small, so it's okay. Um, but what do you do with all these little mini charm packs? Um, there's a there's a whole bunch of stuff on Pinterest, and if you Google these, you can see lots of different projects that are made out of these two and a half inch square small mini charm packs, which are one, most of the time, one of every cut of the fabric of the whole line. So this is a two and a half inch square of every fabric that came out in that line. This one happens to be Timber by Sweetwater. And I'm gonna make something for my daughter out of this because this is one of her uh, favorite lines. This is so Sarah that it's um, written in the stars. She has something made out of this but I have been making project bags. I'm not gonna do a tutorial or anything, but I saw this idea and I will give credit where credit is definitely due. Bumble Stitches, she lives over in the UK and I will scroll across the bottom here, um, her episode that this was on, but she gave a quick tutorial on just making the bottom panel out of these charm packs or any two and a half inch squares that you have or that you want to cut from your stash and sew them together into a just a panel for the project bag. I kind of got carried away and I did a red and white one from, I believe it's called Redwood, Redwood, Redwork Gatherings from Lisa Bonjean, Primitive Gatherings. She has a shop in Wisconsin and a shop in Calif Southern California. But I just love this um, bag. I just ironed these on a piece of interfacing. I believe it's SF 101. And um, Bumble Stitches goes through this whole process. And I really encourage you to go watch her, her episode. But here's a red and white one. I'll try to do this gracefully so I don't get them all mixed up. I have several in different stages. So I have three, four, it looks like. This is, um, no, I don't want to show you that one yet. Actually, that's the only one that's at that stage. Once you sew them all together, the, the seams on the back, and she shows you how to do this. I'm mainly giving you this reference to show you how beautiful these things turn out. This is from the Joe Morton, new Joe Morton line called Rose. And it's not to scale yet because it's not finished. I'll show you a finished one here in a minute. This is Joe Morton's Rose. Those browns and blues and shirtings right here. Oh, 
very nice. Uh, this is from the line Mill Book, um, 1852, M I L L B O O K, also. But this is it. Look at those reds and browns and creams. Just beautiful. I may save that one for showing at the end. Um, my purse, one of my personal favorites is. Huh, this is from a line from also from Sweetwater called Branded, and it's got some bob wire, some brands, some ranch terms. Um, really like this line. That's going to be a project bag, and I've already sewed it and ironed it on the back. This is from Jill Morton again, uh, her line called Glad Tidings. It's more on a Christmas line. And you can see that they're not quite budding up, but that's okay. The way that Bumble Stitches explains this process is amazing. I'm only just showing you these because of the possibilities are endless with the different mini charm packs you have. I have just a few more to show you. This is also from the new, it's not a new Jo Morton line, but it's one of her lines called um, Yesteryear or Yesterday. And this one has not been ironed yet. You can see that it's not laying flat because I haven't ironed it yet, but oh, the color in some of these, just beautiful. You can tell they're all from the same line because of the tones, the colors. Oh, just beautiful. This one is from French General. And then when you pair this to finish your bag, when you pair this with a contrasting print from either the same line or a different line, but uh, just these project bags are kind of addictive. Okay, so when you have this, this part and you iron it and then you um, sew them the other direction and iron it, you end up with something like this, which is your finished panel. I have sewn this both directions and I am ready to put this into a bag. I just, oh, I just love these. Still needs to be quilted and whatnot, but that's kind of what I've been doing as far as a notion for cross-stitching. I cannot wait to get those bags done. All I need are zippers now and just, I wish, I wish I had them all at the same stage, but if they were all at the same stage, then you wouldn't be able to see them in the different stages here like this. So um, I'm really excited about this project bag project of mine. I should have, I don't know, I think there's six or eight of them there. The next thing I would like to say is I've learned a lot from these last two videos, uh, my own in particular, what not to do and what to do. Uh, I know everybody out there is looking for learning tips and learning new things. Um, personally, I have to be really, really careful as to what I say because Carrie, Karen, and Jeannie or Janine, J-E-A-N-N-E. -N -N -E. All three of those kind, kind viewers sent me the flosses that I had mentioned last time. So I wanted to publicly thank you, but also acknowledge that I need to be a little careful in what I say. <laughs> um, I've, I've, I've learned that now and I, I need to be a little bit um, more careful in what I say. So thank you, ladies. I appreciate those threads and flosses. I had mentioned that I was looking for a couple of colors because I couldn't progress on some of my projects and others needed um, kitted up. And um, one of them was country redwood and I have found some country redwood in addition to the, the skeins, the flosses that these three wonderful viewers sent me um, and a couple other colors. Um, one of them I think is pretty much I don't know if it's discontinued or not, but it's very, very difficult to find. So, um, but thank you ladies. I appreciate what you, what you did. I think while receiving those flosses and those surprises in the mail was um, wonderful and fun and a great uh, service to me, I also liked the letter and the cards, the cards and the letters that came with them. Uh, it was very heartwarming. Um, just a very nice thing to do. So I will pay it forward to somebody else who needs some flosses if I have them. And thank you ladies again. 
My one FFO is from Homespun Prims by Lori, and I got it back from the framer. FFO stands for Fully Finished Object, and this one is done. This is Mary Bell. Oh, Lori, you knocked it out of the ballpark. This is on 36 count Wren, and it's on, um, it's, I used all the, all the called for DMC. But look at this frame. Oh, I just love this frame. It's like raised. It's, it's got kind of um, embossed, you know, it's got some texture to it. But I am in love with this. And right back here is my stitchy chair. It's a red coverlet type um, upholstery. But on this wall, all over right here, I'm gonna start hanging um, the samplers that I'm getting back with, with red houses in them. I have this one. I have Baby It's Cold Outside. I have Cherry Hollow Farm. And because I recently had a birthday, my daughter, I don't have it in my possession yet because I'm gonna take it to the framers when she gets done with it. She had just some of the bottom to do. My daughter stitched for me Seeking Refuge from the Scarlet House. That is only the third thing she has ever stitched. Um, blew me away when she gave it to me. Brought tears to my eyes. It was on my um, bucket list to even purchase the chart, and I hadn't quite gotten that far yet. So um, that one will go in the very top on this wall over here because it's even more endearing because she stitched that for me. So anyway, Mary Bell, Homespun Prims by Lori on, on, I don't know if she has an Etsy shop or if she's on the internet, you know, just has her own shop out, her private shop, but it's Homespun Prims by Lori. And this one is called Mary Bell. Real small. Good one to finish. My FOs, which stands for finished objects, but they're not fully finished yet. The first one is from the winter Christmas issue 2016 of Punch Needle and Primitive Stitcher. And I'm really kind of glad this one is done. I did not do the wreath around the outside, but it's called Cookie's House. And it is by Elizabeth Gottschall of Thistles. It's a cute, cute design, cute finish. Um, I don't know why. I just, I didn't enjoy this one like I thought I would. Um, and here, I better cover up my address. <laughs> and here is my finish. I, I don't know what I'm gonna do. If I'm just gonna put this in a small square four by four frame or finish it and hang it on the Christmas tree or a pillow or something. Um, and I'm sorry, it is not ironed. The other ones I ironed pretty good, but this one missed its boat, I guess. Cookie's House. This was a mania start for me from 2020, so it is done. Crossed off the list. The next FO is an old, old Stacy Nash. I could not find it anywhere uh, on her Etsy shop or, or out there. I'm sure you probably could if you did a little bit for more thorough search than what I did. But this one is called Hands to Work, Heart to God. And I probably got this late 90s, maybe 2000, 2001. Here it is. I mean, the packaging looks like her normal packaging right now. But, you know, her presentation, uh, the front of the pattern. But I couldn't find this. And I know I've had this for a good, at least a good 18, 20 years. But here is my finish. Let me get it right side up for you. I did change the year. Most of the most of her years are 1820, and that's what I referred back to. I'm not crazy about the way the 1739 over here looks. So the three is backwards. I don't know if you can see that. That's 1739. The three was backwards and I just thought it looked a little too primitive to me maybe. But here it is. I wanna make sure I get this right side up for you. 
hands to work, hearts to God, 36 count Wren, I want to say, yes, with Colcord DMC. And the only thing I changed is I changed the colors of the stars. The pattern looked blue. It was a kind of a slate gray and I wanted a little bit more blue to stand out. So that's what I did. I think I used 924. That's that. My next finish is also a Stacy Nash. And way back when, about the time I bought that other chart, she used to put out these little vellum covered booklets. And I'm pretty sure there were four. There was a Christmas, maybe two Christmases ones. This one from me to thee. And then I have another one in my whips that I'll show you that's called from Hollyhock, Hollyhock Farm. But this one's called from me to thee. And there's probably six or eight projects in each one of these little booklets. And this is the one I did. This also was a mania start from May of 2020. And it's just called the Heart Pin Keep. They're not slick pages. They're just a heavy cardstock type page, but beautiful, beautiful photography. And this is not fully finished yet. So this is my finish. And I want to say... Um, this was on 22 or 24, just a hard anger uh, fabric. But I love that, that bird. Just love that bird and the tree. This was um, called for DMC. I thought about putting my husband and I's initials up here but I had something else in mind, but I still could probably do that. Just finish it into a square pillow or a frame. I'm not sure. From me to the Stacy Nash. Another one that's in here that, oh, there are so many good ones in here that I just about fell over. Blue Flower Urn Needle Book. Mm. Very primitive, very classic. Um, beautiful. She has these fun little um, ways to tie them. I mean, I wouldn't tie it, but they're just, they were they came with these little ribbons on them. Um, and it's like I said, it's a vellum type covering. Beautiful books. So that's that one that's off my wish or my whip list. And what does WIP stand for? Work in progress. Okay, I'm saving the best for last. Jovianna, 1841. This is from Wendy from the Heart Needle Art by Wendy. Lo loved this, loved it. I was getting a little tired of blue, but uh, I, it's beautiful. I'm so glad I persevered. You knocked this one out of the ballpark, Wendy. I've seen a lot of people start this. Um, a lot of people purchase this. And here is my finish. I put a different ancestor's name across the bottom. Uh, this is my maternal two great grandmothers. So my mother's father's mother's mother is Lydia Jane Wilder, 1869. Ah, oh, I think my favorite element of this chart, of yeah, of this chart, of this stitch, is the lantern. Do you see the lantern right there in the middle? Ah, oh, just an adorable sampler. And I like my ancestor's name across the bottom. Lydia Ann Wilder, Lydia Jane Wilder. My mother's father's mother's mother. And I don't think I'm related to Laura Ingalls Wilder. Um, a little bit different part of the country that this lady was born in, but anyway. Right time period. Um, and maybe they are, I'm sure with the last name of Wilder, I'm related to Laura Ingalls Wilder, but not directly that I can see, that I can trace to right now. Oh, I just love it. So instead of Jobiana 1841, I could call her Lydia 1869. I love it. This one will go to the framer along with um, 
my daughter's seeking refuge that she stitched me and they're both going to go back there this one will probably go closer to the window and then the red houses i'll put all along this side of the wall so anyway oh, i'm glad she's done too okay my three starts for february i have a birthday start which i haven't started yet even though my birthday's passed <laughs> Um, this weekend, I'll start with this weekend, um, a Valentine start and then well, two Valentine starts really, and a, a birthday start. My first start is very, 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 very small. This is from Pinker and Pumpkin Quilting. She is on the internet under Pinker and Pumpkin, P-I-N-K-E-R-N-P-U-N-K-I-N -N -N Quilting. And this stitch is called Heart and Home, and I'll show you a picture here in just a second. This is a freebie chart, so I am going to show you a picture of the actual chart itself because it's free. It's just a small little house and a heart and a key, and there's three colors. It just it gives you the floss name for DMC um, or the color, white, shell pink, and black. Well, I picked Antique Lace, Old Brick Road, or there's old brick, sorry. I don't have my glasses on. And raven. So those three colors. And I think I'm going to do it on a, either a stark white so that this antique lace shows up for the house. Or I will do it on a dark, dark fabric. So there's that. That'll be start number one. Start number two for February is with my friend Lisa in Wisconsin. We are starting something out of the book, My Name is Lydia, from Stacey Nash. And I'm pretty sure Lisa's starting the same thing. I'm, I'm pretty, pretty sure. We are doing the Lydia Corker Pocket Roll. It's a sewing, a sewing project bag, technically. Uh, let me show you a picture of it. There's a picture of it all, um, you know, once it's unrolled. So basically an early day project bag. And I will put an ancestor's initials right there. Um, not sure who yet. And then in place of this dog, I thought it'd be fun to put a house. And then this is what it looks like all wrapped up. Anyway, my name is Lydia Stacy Nash, and this is from 2013, but I'm pretty sure it is still available. And it looks like there's probably a good, I mean, look at this. This was a hard one. I wanted to do this one too. And this is just called the Lydia Corker Sampler Bag. Um, I think there's probably a good eight projects in here, all based on a sampler that Stacy um, has. Yeah, eight or ten projects, pins, quilt, pin keeps, quilts, pocket rolls, strawberries. Um, beautiful, 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 beautiful book. And then my last start, um, when I was at Stitch Group, um, Maggie from Maggie's on Main, she knows I like hedgehogs. And she got me the new hedge roll from uh, Paulette, Plum Street Samplers, Sampler. Plum Street Samplers. Those little hedgehogs. I think they're so cute. And I'll just finish this into a pillow. But she gave this to me, so thank you, Maggie. Something I've been working on the last couple of nights is from JBW Designs, and it's a collection of antique red samplers. And I'm making, I'm stitching this one down here in the corner. It's probably better seen back here on the back. It's this one right here. And I am doing mine on 20 count hazelwood hand dyed by fiber on a whim 20 count ha hand dyed hazelwood ada fiber on a whim and i love this i i um i'm using schoolhouse red and here's my start my next current whip can you see um just barely over the mic chair here there's a basket with about I don't know maybe six or eight more whips in them but they're not 
they'll be active later on in the year. And then you can kind of see roughly this tote right here under my desk, right there. That has uh, my kits and a few more whips in it. But most of my whips, I was very overwhelmed with the number of whips I have. Um, and then I'm starting three more this, this, this month, right? But I consider them very, very small. They're not like big samplers or anything. Uh, I, and I was being distracted by a good number of my whips. So I packed them in another tote and I took them up to my mountain house. And I will um, look at those a little closer after these ones are done. They're not in permanent timeout, but I just wanted them away. So I didn't keep looking at them and say, oh, I want to work on this. I want to work on this. I want to work on this. I've got plenty down here to do. So um, I'm going to be content with what I have to work on. And so many of you left me wonderful, wonderful comments about contentment uh, on my last video. So I appreciate that. And it is true. We do need to be content with what we're working on and content with what we have. So um, this next whip is almost done for me. It is out of print. It's a Blackbird Birds of a Feather. I know this is one of the very highly, highly sought after charts. Um, I'm hoping they reprint this one. I was at um, the Quilter Station Retreat last fall and I saw this in person. Um, this and Home is Where My Heart Blooms. Where My Heart Blooms, I think is what it's called. And that is in my active whip pile too. But um, this one I'm going to put my maternal mother's, mater maternal's, my maternal grandmother's name on it and her birth year. Because this just, her name was Neva. And this chart just screams Grandma Neva. The colors and all that. I am not doing the daisy or the chain stitch around the flowers up here. Um, I didn't want to do that. But oh, I just love this. And I know I'm really close over here, but I have a plan for that. When I get some of the new Blackbird um, Reds That Mind line that's coming out, um, I'm gonna stitch some of that on the side because this is a Blackbird chart. Um, then I will frame it that way with a, with a piece of that material going down the side. I have a lot of Blackbird up in my quilting studio up in the mountains, and I might find something up there too that better suits this, but I only have one of the birds left. Finish this other bird that's here. Hi, Becky. This is your needle minder uh, from our braces days. But uh, May can't come soon enough. I think I counted 17 weeks. And for those of you who are joining in, I get to retire at the end of May. And May cannot come fast enough. I want to say... I even think it's the first three days of June that I'll work so I'm covered for insurance. We all know how that has to go. Um, I, I want to say it's May, June 3rd that uh, I'll be done. But 17 weeks, I want to say close to that. Oh, yeah, I'll wait. Uh, in my Holly Hobby bag, because last time I called this my Hobby Lobby bag, um, I just need to learn to slow down, is... Cutting Paper Snowflakes by Brenda Gervais with a nylon thread. And this one I have a little bit of an issue. You can, she's holding a pair of scissors and a snowflake. I'm not real content with mine because you can barely see the scissors. Let's go like this. You can barely see those scissors. Um, so I'm not sure how I'm going to correct that dilemma if I'm going to just stitch the scissors over the scissors with a darker thread or what, but I'm just not super happy with that aspect of it. Or maybe rip the scissors out and stitch them in a blacker black. I'm not sure, but I got the top border and the side border uh, base pretty much stitched in there. We'll see, but this is an active whip for me because I want to solve that dilemma. I want to move on. So, 
Holly Hobby bag. I'm a child of the 70s. And um, Holly Hobby was my bosom friend. She was my kindred spirit when I was young. Okay, the next whip is from that Stacy Nash book that I mentioned earlier. This one too has a vellum front. This one's called From Holly Hot Farm. Look at that needle roll. I am stitching a couple out of here, but one right now that I'm trying to finish is called the 1776 Flower Urn. Isn't that just, it's so, um, I don't know, muted, but yet that flag, mm, very pretty, but look how small this flag is. I'm doing this one over one on 22. These gorgeous colors and this also was a mania start for those of you um who didn't follow me back in 2020 i did a really dumb thing uh pandemic hit what in about march of 20 may of 20 i was just coming back to stitching i had been quilting for so long uh, on my long arm and piecing and i just got done piecing all those blocks for my four by five quilt block anthology and so I decided mania is coming. There's so many I need to get caught up on stitching. I started 31 projects that mania. So 20, 2020, I started 31 projects. And this is one of them. A lot of them here were, were from that mania start. 2021, last year, I did no mania starts. So I figure I'm a little ahead of the game. But here's my small little flag from that... Um, 1776 flower urn 22 count a mystery linen back in 2020 we were having a hard time getting anything um but here are my i think i think if you're a floss tuber you need to grow five extra arms anyway couple more things here and we're done. The other thing I've been working on, I, I worked on this for uh, Blackbird Weekend, just this last weekend, is Little Birds. I'm stitching this with Christy. And I am going to be working on this mainly this summer, but I decided, I, I know this doesn't look like a wedding sampler, but my husband and I will be celebrating 35 years of marriage in June. And I want to put our names in here and the date we were married. Um, it's got two houses and little birds. Um, I think it would suffice for a wedding sampler as long as our names are on it. But I have a little story about this one. I started this one over two on 32 count Heartland. The call for is 36 count Heartland. I don't know what possessed me, but I only used one thread. I'm going back over it, kind of like I'm thinking about doing with cutting paper snowflakes. I went over, I went over the whole alphabet with two now, and you can tell right over here in this corner to a certain point has got two, but then the rest of the border is very faint, and my border connects all. You know, it, it, I didn't have to rip any of it out. It connects all the way around, so I don't, I don't want to lose this fabric. I don't want to waste all that floss. So I went back over it with one thread. So now there's two threads. So it's a little bit darker. It's a little bit more vivid. And I'm really happy with that. Um, but before I got too much further, I thought, okay, what am I going to do to save this sampler? Um, once I get the border all the way done, everything else is already stitched twice with two threads now. Once I get this border done, then I'll be ready to stitch two over two so that it's more vivid. This border has some beautiful reds. Um, I'll make sure I have enough floss in case I run out of floss. Um, that at least it's kind of in the same time era when I bought it. But, um, oh, this sampler. And I've got this, I think it's chickpea. This border in here is so much fun. The little um, triangles, so much fun to stitch. But you can definitely tell from here 
to here is double stitched where the rest of it is not. It's just really, really plain, very light. That's the result of one over two instead of two over two. So that's been a work in progress, a whip. Uh, I think when I go up to my mountain home this summer, which I will be spending much more time up there here after I retire, um, this is going to be kind of my main focus, not monogamously, but this will be my big stitch, my big sampler stitch that I would like to get done. Anyway, that is Little Birds, very easily still available. Got two houses, and I think this one says Alma Allen, Lakewood, Colorado, and then the date. This came out May of 20. It just says copyright 2020, but I know this one wasn't out for market yet. Um, and it might have even been a sampler club stitch or something. I got it in May of 20, and I started it in July for July 4th. Actually, it was July 4th of 20. I write that on my tag of my flosses, and I started this July 4th of 20. So just, I've always loved this sampler. One item of business from my previous video. Normally, I do not participate in giveaways. I don't really sign up for them, and I don't hold them here on my, my channel. Uh, however, right around Christmas time, I had ordered this chart. It's from Threadwork Primitives. And it says Christmas, Merry Christmas, 1843. But I, and I love that chart, but I mainly got it for this pin keep right down here. My kitty cats are kind of, uh, I got it for this pin keep right down here. I ordered it and it never came. Oh, sorry, I just bumped the camera. Sorry about that. I ordered it and it never, I, last thing I need is for a bunch of people to be dizzy watching my videos. I ordered it and it never came, never came, never came, never came, never came. And I contacted her and said, I'm sorry, it's just, it's not, it's not here yet. Um, could you put a tracer on it? And it had been like two, two and a half, three weeks almost, a long time. So she did that and she just sent out another one. Great company to work with. I got this off her shop at, on Etsy, Threadwork Primitives. The day after she contacted me, of course, Murphy's Law, here comes this one in the mailbox and the envelope looked like it had seen a major mud puddle as a, as a residence for three or four weeks. I mean, it was soaking wet. It was caked with mud. It, it had been put through the ringer, but yet I opened up that bubble wrap manila envelope, kind of tore it apart. This was in perfect condition inside. So I told her when the I contacted her right away and told her when the next one came, I would give it as a giveaway. So this is this is the next one. Um, both charts are, I mean, even for that first one, it it was in pristine condition. I cannot imagine where it had been, but yet that bubble wrap or envelope that it was in um, kept it. Um, and this plastic wrap helped keep it in pristine condition. Not one, not one tear, not one, not one blemish. So this one I told her I would give away because she had already sent the other one out. So this one I did um, the random comment picker and this one is going to a Patricia Rather, R-A-E-T-H-E-R. -E -E Patricia, I will comment on your comment and if you send me your uh, address, I will get this out in the mail to you. So um, thank you for all the kind comments. That leads me into the last segment that I would like to talk about today. So many of you commented last time on contentment, on my um, monologue or my going on about contentment. And it is true. Contentment to me, I've always said, being the accountant that I am, and I have that background in college and I've just always done accounting, um, being content is an income stream. We have income streams from maybe rentals or you know, whatever we all work, jobs, savings accounts, interest, whatever, we have what we call income streams from different forms of income. But being content is an in income stream because we don't always have to be 
keeping up with the Joneses. We don't always have to be um, seeking for that will never make us happy. We don't always have to be chasing rainbows that um, don't exist because we really have everything we need around us. Um, love your family, love your stitching, be content with who you are, what you are, what you believe. We can always improve. I'm not saying just stay like you are, but be content with what you have. Um, you're a lot in life. We are all facing really hard and difficult times right now. And it is my belief that being content is a form of income stream. It, it means you don't have to spend money that you don't have or don't want to spend on trying to keep up with the Joneses. Um, being content is more of a state of mind than a feeling or a state of your bank account or the current condition of your wardrobe. Um, being content is an income stream. It is, it is worth um, its weight in gold. So stitch what you got from Bonnie at Log Cabin Stitcher. Stitch more, start less, and I'm a horrible example of that. I didn't start anything in January and I don't have any starts here now again till plan, probably July. But this month I have three. One really tiny one, a small in that hedgehog, and then my Lydia Corker sewing roll. So um, stay safe, stay warm, stitch what you got, stitch more, start less, and I will see you on the second Saturday of March. Thank you.